Okay, what we have here is a GRA 39 unit. Uh, it's actually made of two, two mechanisms. There's a local and a uh, remote unit involved in it. This is the carry bag they were traditionally put in. It was a linseed oil soaked cotton to protect it against dust and dirt, a little bit of weather. These things are pretty much watertight the way they're built. So, you know, the driving rain isn't an issue for them. They come with two handsets. A lot of people in the military are familiar with this particular handset. Push the talk right down here. Okay, what we have here is the remote unit. This is the one that would be uh, connected up at your uh, switchboard or your, you don't even really need to use it with a switchboard. You can simply connect it up uh, uh, and use it as a remote control. And this is your local unit and it's actually the one that would be connected to your radio shack or radio mechanism in a distant location. Uh, so it's kind of a misnomer when you listen to think about it, but it, it actually makes sense. And the way these work is they actually are field telephones by themselves but they also allow remote command of a radio. Now they're being replaced by the newer systems. The newer ones allow you by using the remote unit you can change the volume and even the channel of the attached radio if it's compatible. Uh, this one does not allow that. This only will key up the radio and allow transmission or taking it off key and allow it you know, to listen. If you need to adjust the radio in any way you have to use the um, field telephone functions which consists of pushing this plunger which will cause a light on the other side and a clacking noise to go to let the, whoever's the operator know that hey somebody needs to talk to you. Um, this part here would then be interfaced into a particular radio. These by themselves will not work with a civilian radio and the simple reason is is that there is a huge drop in the volume coming out of these and a filter in them to prevent the control signal from one radio to the other from operating and making a noise in the circuit that you would hear. Um, I found a way around that with the help of uh, GorillaCom. He's got his own YouTube channel on here so give him a shout out. Try looking up GorillaCom as in Gorilla Fighter not Gorilla the Animal uh, Primate. This right here, um, I bought some more adapters for it off eBay and I made my own interface cable which should be in here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. This particular one is set up as part of it. And what it does is, this is only part of it. There's actually another part I need to go get real quick. I obviously packed it away somewhere else. Uh, what it does is it is a microphone amplifier that needs a 9 volt power supply to run. It's a preamp and it amps up the signal coming out of here enough that it will work with a civilian radio. This one in particular I've rigged up this interface cable to go between my amplifier and the um, one of my uh, handheld GMRS FRS radios using I scrapped one of their cheap um, remote microphone units that you can key up. It's currently rigged up in such a way that it operates on the uh, um, Vox system which is okay. I need to redo the cable and do it differently and rig it up so it actually keys the radio and doesn't run on Vox so it's a little bit faster to respond and better. Um, you connect these up the same way you connect any of the others up. These are your terminals. You push them down and slip the wire into the side. I color coded them red and green simply because some of the field telephones, it doesn't really matter, but some of the field telephones it's nice to have red and green because you can run a ground wire for safety. You can also use a ground wire in a single line to run these, although it's not recommended because technically somebody with a very sensitive amplifier could stick a spike in the ground and um, listen in on your communications that way um, because you're transmitting your signal, literally you're catching part of the signal as a ground wave and it's it's not secure, but it allows you to get away when you don't have enough wire. You can strip the two-strand wire back and make one long strand and uh, do it that way. 
when you uh, pump this, it sends a high voltage charge out and causes this little light right here to light and this clacker to make a tapping clacking noise. Uh, this can be used, of course, with the SB22A or even by itself. The idea is that you could have your radio shack, you know, up to two miles away uh, on the side of a mountain. Ignore that sound over there. That's a small cat that's very irritating. That's just a cat that likes to sleep a lot. The, uh, when you run the, uh, this will allow you to like be in a ravine or someplace and then put your radio shack up on the side of a mountain where you have excellent uh, transmission range with an antenna mast and all. Several guys up there running the radio shack with some mortar, mortars for defense and uh, machine guns, maybe some grenade launchers, protect themselves. And uh, you can still communicate with them, tell them they need to take change the batteries and the units or whatever's necessary, change the channel, uh, change the volume level, whatever. Uh, when connected in, you can tie in here with this connection for the regular, where the phone would regularly connect in. And we have a cable. I made up a box for this to speed things along because the wiring diagram is ridiculous looking. So I built a box. It's all labeled out with uh, binding post connectors. You click into here, and from there you run all your your control wires pretty quickly tells you run this to the line pack, run this back to these terminals here, run that and you're done. And then you can use one line pack on the um, on the SB22. If somebody rings here, it's going to trigger the uh, doll's eye uh, indicator on the line pack and the ringer on the SB22. You can pick it up or you can just pick up the phone. If you're on the radio switch right here, which says radio, then you're listening to it. And if you need to talk to somebody on the tele by telephone function, you flip this sort of telephone and you crank the ringer. And over on this end, it would go ahead and ring. And the guy on this end would pick up his phone unit, which is plugged into the audio port here. And he'd switch down a telephone and talk and say, you know, this is so-and-so, what can I do for you? And tell you to change the batteries, change the volume. You know, is there anything weird going on up there? You know, we're sending replacements to switch out with y'all. It should be there shortly within the hour, etc. This automatically goes back to remote. And you can go to radio function. The guy up here on this end can go to radio function and key up his uh, handset and use it to talk directly over the radio as well if necessary. That about does it. Um, next video I'll show, I'll show this all interfaced into the SB22 from a distance with uh, one of the radios and show you how it works. Have a good one.